Do you notice something wrong in the world today? Can you feel it? Are you ready for it? More importantly, do you know Christ? Sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we gather to delve into a challenging and profound teaching of Jesus found in Matthew 5:29. This verse, part of the Sermon on the Mount, calls us to radical discipleship and a deep commitment to holiness. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, seeking your wisdom and guidance. Open our hearts to the truths of your word and help us to understand the depth of your call to holiness and sacrifice. May your Holy Spirit move within us, illuminating our minds and strengthening our spirits. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In Matthew 5:29, Jesus teaches, And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. This verse is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, where he teaches on the true meaning of the law and calls his followers to a higher standard of righteousness. At first glance, this verse may seem extreme and even shocking. Jesus uses hyperbolic language to emphasize the seriousness of sin and the lengths we must go to avoid it. He is not advocating literal self-mutilation, but rather using a powerful metaphor to illustrate the importance of dealing decisively with anything that leads us into sin. To fully understand this verse, we must consider its context within the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew 5, 27, 28, Jesus addresses the issue of adultery. Ye have heard that it was said of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Jesus shifts the focus from the external act of adultery to the internal attitude of lust. He underscores that sin begins in the heart and must be addressed at its root. Following this teaching, Jesus presents the radical solution found in Matthew 5, 29 to 30. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Jesus emphasizes that we must take drastic measures to remove anything from our lives that causes us to sin, whether it is our eye, hand, or any other part of our body. Jesus' teaching in Matthew 5:29 highlights the seriousness of sin and its consequences. Sin is not merely a minor flaw or mistake. It is a rebellion against God's holy standards and a destructive force that leads to spiritual death. In Romans 6.23, Paul writes, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin separates us from God and brings about spiritual death, but through Christ we receive the gift of eternal life. The imagery of casting out the right eye or cutting off the right hand underscores the drastic action required to deal with sin. 
Jesus is calling us to examine our lives and identify anything that causes us to stumble. This could be harmful habits, relationships, behaviors, or even thoughts that lead us away from God. We must be willing to make difficult and painful sacrifices to remove these stumbling blocks and pursue holiness. Let's answer the call to radical discipleship. Jesus' teaching in Matthew 5.29 is a call to radical discipleship. Following Christ requires a total commitment to His Lordship and a willingness to make significant sacrifices for the sake of righteousness. In Luke 9.23, Jesus says, And He said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Discipleship involves self-denial, daily surrender, and a steadfast commitment to follow Jesus, no matter the cost. In Matthew 16, 24, 25, Jesus reiterates this call. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. True discipleship means letting go of our own desires and ambitions and fully embracing the path that Jesus sets before us. Here are some good practical steps for radical discipleship. The first step in radical discipleship is to examine your heart and identify areas where sin may be taking root. In Psalm 139, 23, 24, David prays, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Invite God to search your heart and reveal any hidden sins or areas of compromise. Once you have identified areas of sin, confess them to God and seek His forgiveness. In 1 John 1 9 we read, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Genuine repentance involves turning away from sin and making a commitment to live in obedience to God. Take practical steps to remove any stumbling blocks from your life. This may involve ending harmful relationships, avoiding certain places or activities and making changes to your daily routines. In Hebrews 12:1, we are encouraged, Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Find a trusted friend or mentor who can hold you accountable in your walk with Christ. James 5.16 advises, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Accountability provides support and encouragement as you strive to live a life of holiness. Regularly read and meditate on Scripture to strengthen your faith and guide your actions. In Psalm 119, 105 we read, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God's word provides wisdom, direction, and the power to resist temptation. Rely on the Holy Spirit to empower you in your journey of radical discipleship. In Galatians 5.16, Paul writes, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The Holy Spirit equips us to live according to God's will and enables us to overcome the power of sin. While radical discipleship requires significant sacrifices, it also brings profound rewards. Jesus promises abundant life to those who follow him. In John chapter 10, verse 10, he says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. True life, joy, and fulfillment are found in a deep and abiding relationship with Christ. Additionally, radical discipleship leads to spiritual growth and maturity. In James 1, 2-4 we read, My brethren, count it all joy, when you fall into divers temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. 
Trials and sacrifices refine our faith and produce spiritual maturity. Furthermore, radical discipleship secures our eternal reward. In Matthew 19, 29, Jesus promises, And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. The sacrifices we make for the sake of Christ are not in vain. They lead to eternal life and everlasting joy in the presence of God. It is essential to understand that Jesus' teaching in Matthew 5.29 uses hyperbolic language to emphasize a point. He is not advocating for literal self-mutilation, but highlighting the extreme measures we must take to avoid sin. Jesus often used hyperbole to make his teachings memorable and impactful. Some may struggle with the balance between God's grace and the call to holiness. It is important to remember that while we are saved by grace through faith, we are also called to live lives that reflect our transformation in Christ. In Ephesians 2, 8, 10, Paul writes, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Grace empowers us to pursue holiness, not as a means of earning salvation, but as a response to God's love and mercy. The severity of Jesus' teaching underscores the seriousness of sin and its consequences. In a culture that often trivializes sin, we must remember that sin is an affront to God's holiness and has devastating effects on our lives. The call to radical discipleship is a call to take sin seriously and to pursue a life of righteousness. Our commitment to radical discipleship serves as a powerful witness to others. When we live lives of integrity, sacrifice, and devotion to Christ, we reflect his love and truth to the world. In Matthew 5.16, Jesus encourages us, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Radical discipleship involves serving others with humility and love. Jesus, our ultimate example, came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many, Matthew 20, 28. By serving others selflessly, we embody the heart of Christ and demonstrate the transformative power of the gospel. Prayer is essential for sustaining a life of radical discipleship. It connects us with God, strengthens our faith, and aligns our hearts with his will. In 1 Thessalonians 5:17. Paul exhorts us to pray without ceasing. A vibrant prayer life fuels our commitment to follow Christ wholeheartedly. Matthew 5.29 challenges us to embrace radical discipleship and make significant sacrifices for the sake of holiness. Jesus' call to pluck out our right eye or cut off our right hand is a powerful metaphor for the decisive action required to deal with sin and pursue righteousness. By examining our hearts, confessing our sins, removing stumbling blocks, seeking accountability, immersing ourselves in God's Word, and depending on the Holy Spirit, we can live lives that reflect our commitment to Christ. The rewards of radical discipleship are profound, including abundant life, spiritual growth, and eternal rewards. While the journey may be challenging, it is also deeply fulfilling and leads to a closer relationship with our Savior. Dear brothers and sisters, let's end this session with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We are grateful for the grace and mercy you have shown us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask for your strength and guidance as we strive to live lives of radical discipleship. Help us to identify and remove any stumbling blocks in our lives and lead us in the way everlasting. Thank you, dear viewers, for joining us on this spiritual journey.
Your presence has made this discourse possible and more enlightening. We're excited to announce that we'll soon be launching a new series, Bible Adventures for Children. This series will bring biblical stories to life in a way that is engaging and accessible for young minds. We also invite you to support our ministry and help us spread the Word of God to more people. You can help by liking and sharing this video, or you can visit our website for more resources and ways you can contribute to our mission. Remember, each one of us has the potential to awaken the righteous version of ourselves. We're all capable of turning away from sin and embracing a life of holiness. As we close, we encourage you to join us in our mission of saving souls. May God be with you and guide you in all your endeavors. Amen. Thank you.